I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today I will talk about area, area of different simple uh, shapes in plane geometry. Uh, this is kind of continuation of uh, the topics which I started with introduction of what is basically the measurement, what is the unit of measure, etc. So we will concentrate on plane uh, objects on a, in a two-dimensional plane. All right, first of all, let me just remind very briefly what I was talking in the introduction, which is basically that we do need a unit of measurement, and unit of measurement uh, uh, of the area on the plane is some kind of a square, the side of which is equal to 1, and so the area of which we just establish as being equal to 1. Well, establish is not really the right word. Probably we set it to be 1. 1 square something. If this is the 1 meter, it will be, it will be square meter uh, or, or any other unit of measurement. So this is basically the definition of the unit of measurement. And the second thing which I was talking about was that if you have any, uh, any rectangle uh, and linear measurements of its sides are A and B, then um, using certain logic, basically, I, I showed that the area is equal to the result of multiplication of these two numbers. You can say this is the length, this is the width, or whatever, whatever other names you want to, to call these two sides. But anyway, two sides of rectangle multiply uh, in their linear measure uh, will give you the area uh, of this rectangle. So I will use this particular um, fact, and I will also use something which I, again, me uh, mentioned before, if you have congruent figures, uh, then their area is the same. Now, using these two facts, the fact about the area of a rectangle and the fact that congruent um, figures have the same measure, the same area, we will talk about specific um, objects in uh, in plane geometry, and we will talk about what kind of area they actually have. Okay, the object number one is parallelogram. Now, how to calculate the area of parallelogram? It's not a rectangle, which we know how to put our squares. However, what we can do is we can use the fact um, that congruent figures have the same area. So what I will do is the following. I will drop a couple of perpendiculars. So if this is A, B, C, and D. This would be X and this would be Y. So I dropped two perpendiculars from B and C. Um, What's important right now is to notice that these two triangles, ABX and DCY, are congruent. Now, why? It's very simple. First of all, these are perpendiculars, which means that the, both triangles are right triangles. Now, they have the same um, uh, leg, which is basically the distance between two parallel lines. This distance is always the same wherever I measure this. And also they have uh, uh, congruent hypotenuses, AB and CD, because they are sides of parallelogram. So therefore, we can say that uh, triangles are congruent. Their areas are the same. OK, that's actually very important because if you will consider the area of ABCD parallelogram, and then you subtract from this, this particular triangle, which will reduce its area, and instead add this triangle, CGY, to increase the area, 
then you will see that we will get a, par uh, um, a rectangle. Now, this rectangle has exactly the same area as original um, parallelogram because I reduced the area by the area of this triangle and then added the area which is exactly the same because triangles are congruent. So the area of this rectangle is equal to the area of parallelogram. So this is the property which I'm going to use. Now, what is the area of this particular rectangle? That, that we know. It's basically multiplication of side by side. So if we are talking about parallelogram, then one side of this rectangle is the same as side of the original parallelogram, right? That was original parallelogram. So BC is shared as a side by parallelogram ABCD and rectangle XBCY. So one side is this. Now, what is another side of this rectangle, the B? Well, that's actually the height, that's the height of our parallelogram, um, which actually brings us to the formula that the area of the parallelogram is equal to the result of the multiplication of side by the height. Well, what's interesting is, what if you start from another side? And you will drop perpendiculars instead of this way, instead of dropping from this parallel to this parallel, you will drop from here to here. So let me draw it with a different color. You drop this perpendicular and this perpendicular. Now, obviously, these two triangles ADX and BCY are exactly the same, uh, they are congruent by exactly the same logic. And so the area of the same parallelogram would be, uh, in this particular case, the same as area of this rectangle, which means it's the result of multiplication of this side of the parallelogram, let's call it whatever, M, by this height, M. So it looks like exactly the same um, area of the parallelogram, we can express either the result of the multiplication of one side multiplied by the height between this side and the parallel line, or, which is a different formula, the result of multiplication of this side, which is different from this, it's a parallelogram, it's not a rhombus, this side by the height, which is between these two parallel lines. So, it looks like no matter how we calculate, no matter which side we take as a base, so to speak, and which height we take as um, another component of the multiplication, we will get exactly the same result. So whenever you have a parallelogram, either you multiply this side by this height, or you multiply this side by this height. The result should be exactly the same. And that's, by the way, one of the interesting properties of the parallelogram, that the result of multiplication of this times this is the same as this times this. So A times H is equal to B times C. Or, if you wish, A divided by B is equal to C divided by H, which means that proportion between A and B 
is reverse to the proportion of corresponding heights. The height to the A goes to the denominator and the height to, to the B goes to the numerator. Well, all the different variations of how we present this particular uh, property are equivalent, so the most important thing is that the area of the parallelogram is equal to multiplication, result of the multiplication of the lengths of one of the sides times the uh, lengths of the altitude towards that particular side. Next is a triangle. Now, I will use exactly the same property of um, equal or rather congruent geometrical uh, figures have equal area, right? So, what I will do here, I will draw a parallel line to this and parallel line to this. Now, what I did, I basically converted my triangle, ABC, into a parallelogram. A, B, D, C. Now, if this is parallel to this and this is parallel and this is parallel to this, then obviously these two triangles are congruent because they have a common side. And then this angle is equal to this one because these are parallel and, uh, uh, and the one which is uh, crossing them. And... Uh, what else? And this angle is equal to this one, because these two are parallel. Alright? So, we have angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. Okay, so triangles are congruent, which means their uh, areas are exactly the same. And now, what I can say is that I can choose this particular uh, base and this particular height. So I have a base of a triangle and height of the triangle. But now this, if I will multiply A by H, it would be the area of the parallelogram, which is twice as big as the area of one particular triangle. So the area of the triangle is this. And again, as in the case of the parallelogram, you can start from any other base. You can start from this base multiplied by this height, this altitude, or you can, you can start from this base and multiply by this altitude. No matter how you do it, it's always the result of the multiplication of the lengths of the uh, one of the sides times altitude towards that side, not any other altitude, towards that particular side, divided by two. That's the area of the triangle. All right, fine. What else do we have? We have trapezoid. All right, it's kind of equivalent, more or less. I mean, all these proofs, so to speak, are, are really trivial, and uh, they are basically going towards exactly the same kind of solution. Now, in this particular case, since I have two, two, uh, two bases parallel to each other, then it's not really exactly the same where to start. I really have to start from these two bases which are parallel to each other. Now, let's draw a line parallel BX parallel to CG. Now, since this is equal to this, BC is equal to XG, then this piece is B, and therefore this piece is A minus B to get the whole length to A, right? Now, if this is H, the altitude of this trapezoid, then what I can say is that the area of this trapezoid is a sum. You remember, measure is additive, which means two composed together objects uh, have the area equal to sum of each component. Uh, so, let's calculate the area of triangle ABX. Well, as we know, this is the multiplication of the base times the altitude. The altitude is exactly the same. It's the same H. So it's A minus H, sorry, A minus B, times 
sh divided by 2. Now, the area of parallelogram bcdx is the result of multiplication of the side. In this case, we choose exactly this particular side times the same uh, altitude. So it's plus bh. Well, if you will simplify it, it will be a minus b times h plus 2bh divided by 2, right? This is the common denominator. And multiply it by 2 and divide it by 2. If you uh, open these parentheses, it will be ah minus bh plus 2bh divided by 2, which is minus bh and plus 2bh is plus bh. So it's ah plus bh divided by 2 or a plus b divided by 2h, which can be interpreted as this a plus b uh, divided by 2, it's, this is a, and this is b, so it's half the sum of two bases of the trapezoid. Uh, so half the sum of the two bases and uh, multiplied by uh, the altitude. And by the way, uh, I hope you did not forget that um, half of the sum of two bases is actually the length of the median uh, of the trapezoid. So you can always say that the area of the trapezoid is equal to the result of multiplication of the median line times the, uh, the altitude. And by the way, this is actually can be this can be proven directly, I mean geometrically, not algebraically. Uh, using the following uh, logic. Let me draw another picture, it would be better. So if you have a trapezoid, the big one, now this is midpoints, so this is a median line. So this is equal to this, this is equal to this. Now, what I will do is I will continue this line here and draw perpendicular here. From this point, perpendicular to these two parallel lines, and from this, draw perpendicular to these lines. Now, it's very easy to prove that these two triangles are congruent as well as these two triangles are congruent. It's kind of obvious because we have this midpoint, so it's two hypotenuses and you have an angle, so same thing here, two hypotenuses and, and, and the vertical angles. So triangles are congruent, so their areas are the same. Now, what happens is, from our trapezoid, we subtract, we cut off this particular triangle, but we add this one. We cut this triangle, but we add this one. And now, lo and behold, we have a rectangle, right? Because this is perpendicular to this. So it's a rectangle. And the rectangle has the area of uh, uh, side, which is mid, 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 uh, median line, which we already basically have. This is the median line. And uh, times the height. And height of this rectangle is exactly the same as the original trapezoid. So you see, using a different geometrical proof, we came to exactly the same formula. Well, as long as we know that the median line of the trapezoid is equal to a plus b dot over, over 2, then we have exactly the same form. Well, that basically concludes uh, this uh, lecture about uh, basics of area. Now, um, speaking about basics, in neither length basics or area basics, I did not touch circle. I didn't go into a direct calculation of what is the circumference of a circle or uh, area of a circle. That would be a separate topic because it requires a careful approach, if you don't mind. 
um, it's not like straightforward, like in the case of you know triangle or, or trapezoid or whatever else. All right, so basically this is a short introduction to basic shapes uh, in, in geometry and their area. Um, all the more difficult stuff would be presented as problems uh, and some uh, theoretical lectures maybe a little later. Um, thank you, and uh, don't forget that if you will register to unisor.com, you can take exams, you can uh, basically build an entire uh, educational process and go from topic to, to, uh, to topic, which I definitely recommend. Thank you very much.